Hi there, this is Steven Gonzalez. How are you doing today? Well, we have installed Reaper. We have installed the SWS extension for Reaper, and we've installed those four enhancement programs. And now it's finally time to run Reaper for the very first time. And that's what's next on Reaper for Voice Talent. In this video, we're gonna be tackling Reaper's profile. Basically, that's the brains of Reaper where it stores all its information and, and how to run. Things like themes and key maps and project and track templates and effects, presets, all this good stuff. We'll see what that looks like in Windows Explorer in just a few minutes. Then we're gonna be tackling connecting and configuring your interface to use Reaper. And along the way, we're gonna be looking at the configurator for your interface and what sample rates and block sizes are and all that good stuff. Then we're gonna be looking at the repack acknowledgement window. This is the easiest thing inside this video. Basically, we hit okay. And then finally, we tackle Cocos's three-tier licensing system. Remember, Cocos is the company that puts out Reaper. And this three-tier licensing system is one of the reasons why people are coming to Reaper in droves. As is usual, whenever we are in this part of the video, there are a few caveats. The first is that I have multiple interfaces connected to the machine that's recording this video. I'm going to be presenting them to make a point about, of all things, labeling. And when we get there, I'll explain a little more. The second caveat is that I have third-party VSTs from Waves and from Isotope, which I use in my professional VO work, that will be enumerated during the first running of Reaper. Now, this will cause my Reaper profile generation to take a bit longer than yours should. So don't freak out whenever, you know, you're finished and I'm still only halfway. That's because it's enumerating all those VSTs and such. Finally, if this is your first time in this video, especially if this is your first time in Reaper for Voice Talent, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, setting it to all, and be sure to watch the video all the way through. In fact, watch this one particularly multiple times so that you don't miss anything. And of course, always, if you have comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as quickly as I can. And with all that said, and without further ado, let's get started. Here on the desktop, I have two things, the desktop icon for Reaper and the reaper-license.rk. And this dash license should give you a hint as far as what I'm gonna be doing with this in just a few minutes. I would also like to draw your attention to this. This is the directory that we created whenever we installed the repack.dll. Now, for those of you who have been successful in installing at the SWS extension, you may also have a grooves directory. That's nothing to be worried about if you don't. The user plugins with the repack.dll is important, however. So then we're gonna put this to the side for a second. Whenever I double click on this desktop icon, I want you to notice what happens whenever Reaper starts running. The first thing that's going to happen is that this flash screen is gonna take place and it's going to start enumerating all my stuff within, the, uh, within my system. And it's going to organize it into the Reaper profile, and you're gonna see all kinds of folders and INI files and text files in this area. Watch what happens whenever I double click on this desktop icon in three, two, one. Here's the splash screen, and here's the Reaper profile. Look how it's starting to populate and be organized and all this good stuff. We have color themes, which is how Reaper looks in the colors and format and all this good stuff. We have effects, which is where literally the effects are and their presets and such. Uh, of course, we have repack. We have scripts, of course. Notice what's missing, however. We don't have a directory called project templates. We don't have a directory called track templates. That will be covered in future videos. But notice we have INI files and text files, all this good stuff here. This is the Reaper profile. If you ever want to start from scratch again, as we are doing, the easiest way to do that is to delete all of this stuff and start from scratch. I've had to do so in the past, and some of my clients have had to do so in the past as well. So we hit. X out of here. Here is the repack acknowledgement window. I guess it wants to be first, so I'll take care of that. I hit OK, and like that, it's gone. Now let's talk about connecting and configuring your interface to use Reaper. Right now, Reaper is saying, look, I don't know that you have an audio device. So do you, and if so, which one do you want me to go for? Well, we hit yes, we do have an audio device, and we're greeted with the Reaper preferences window. Now, a short note about this particular window, notice that it has a bunch of sections within it. In a whole series of videos, I'm going to be tackling, manipulating some of these settings within the preferences so that Reaper is not 
so much a music production software package, which again, it's primarily meant for, and B, much more VO friendly. Suffice to say, there's a lot there. Your interface may have come with software, or you may have had to download and install it. Either way, you probably now have what's known as an audio stream input-output driver. Well, this allows your interface to speak through Windows to Reaper. And with that driver may have come what is known as a configurator. My configurator is an external program altogether, but some of them may be integrated within Windows itself, and I'm thinking specifically of the Steinberg UR12 Mark II. It uses the Yamaha USB ASIO driver that's integrated within Control Panel. Go into Control Panel. In the upper right-hand corner, you would say, show me the large or small icons. And then the last option would say Yamaha whatever. That will get you to your configurator. I say that because of what's coming up. Whenever I click on the ASIO driver dropdown, you'll see that all of my interfaces are here. Now I'm going to hit the Audient ID 14 driver. Notice that the input labels have changed as well as the output range. Watch what happens whenever I choose the Personas. Notice that the labels have changed again. And then in the Mackie, again, they have changed. Your labels may not look the same as mine, and probably they won't, and that's okay. If all you're going to be doing within Reaper is voiceover work, and that's it, then it's okay to choose one channel for input, one channel for output. And the way that you do that is simply make the first and the last pointer, if you will, the same, like that. So I'm using one channel of input, one channel for the output. Now, if I'm doing something that requires stereo sound effects, for example, or, or music, or I'm, I'm actually producing a music bed so that I'm within copyright or whatever, then maybe I want a stereo type of thing. And that's where I would choose a second channel for the last. Now, before we get into sample rate and block size, we need to go to that configurator, which is what I mentioned earlier. When I click on the ASIO configuration, here's my configurator. And I'm looking for two specific numbers, sample rate and block size. And that block size is sometimes called buffer size. Now, a sample rate, what exactly is a sample rate? Well, that's the number of times per second that the interface is listening to the audio coming from the microphone. The first two, 44.1 and 48K, are more accepted than 96K. However, if you're going to be doing some high-powered processing, then it's okay to record in 96K. Now, in the previous version of the fundamental sequence, I did use 96K. However, software and hardware have both risen to the challenge, and now I use 48K as my mainstay. I do sometimes still go into 96, but the majority of my recordings are now in 48K. Now, the buffer size, or sometimes called the block size. How many samples is the interface going to hold before it gives it to the computer? That's why it's in powers of two, you'll notice. 16, 32, 64, 128, blah, blah, blah. The computer only knows two digits, right? Zeros and ones. And so it's in the binary numerical system, which means powers of two. In Reaper, I could put a thousand but it would not be nearly as effective as if I put 1024 because, again, 1,000 is not a power of 2, whereas 1024 is. I remember 1024 and 48, and I get out of my configurator, and I put those numbers in the sample rate, 48,000, and my block size, 1024. Now I have connected and configured my interface, so I hit OK. And now let's talk about Caucasus licensing system for Reaper. There are three levels to Caucasus licensing system. The first one is the one that we're in right now, which is the evaluation or the demo licensing. And you can tell because this NAC screen is always going to come up at least, well, once a day at least, whenever you get into Reaper. You'll see that there's this button here that can't be clicked yet because it's waiting for your cursor to actually be activated within the window. And then it starts counting down. And once it stops counting down, it'll say still evaluating. Now, Kakos is so confident that you'll love Reaper that they're willing to give you 60 days of full-blown version of Reaper. None of this, well, you can only record 30 seconds of audio. And oh, by the way, you can't save or render anything. You can only just kind of record and see if you like it. No, 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 no. You get a full-blown version of Reaper. Now, that's the demo version. And by the way, this, this licensing system is on the honor system. If you're still using Reaper after 60 days, you probably have joined the ranks of the Reaperites or 
the Reaper heads, or whatever the name is that Reaper users call themselves. And in this case, you want to go ahead and buy a license. And there are two licenses, which are the second and third levels of licensing. Now, how do you get a license? Well, you go to the Reaper website and you click on purchase. And whenever you do that, you greet it with this web page. This list enumerates the eligibility requirements to use the discounted license, which is at the time of this recording is only 60 bucks for a license that lasts for two full versions. So at the time of this recording, which is 6.12, you're good to go all the way through six and seven. And whenever version eight comes out, then you'll be asked to buy another license. The last time that I had to buy a license was about six or seven years ago. That's about eight to $10 a year. Compare that with other DAWs. And I'll just leave you there with it. If you want the discounted license, you click this link. If you make above $20,000, then it's really okay to hit 225. You would hit this, and this is where you would put in your information, making sure your email address is accurate because that is what they're going to use to send you a reaper-license.rk file. Now that we've done that, let's say, and we've gone to our email message and we've saved the RK file to our desktop, here it is. So we click on the import license key and here's a really slick way of doing it, I think. We can right drag this RK file into this particular directory. We say copy here. We hit continue because it needs to. We hit the UAC and then we click on that file and we hit open. We hit thank you and it's licensed. Now notice in the title bar, you see that it went from evaluation license to license for personal small business use, that type of thing. In the next video, we're gonna be tackling the different parts of Reaper. And in the description below, there's a link to the Windows centric playlist. If you have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell, setting it to all so that you know when I go live or upload another video. So this is Steven Gonzalez with Steven Gonzalez voiceovers, wishing y'all all the best and you have a wonderful and wonder-filled day.